The Lord be with you. We welcome you here at the Salem Covenant Church this evening, both in person as well as online, as we gather to worship God on this Good Friday, this Holy Friday. As we enter this time of worship, we invite you to take a moment to be still, to invite the Spirit to open your heart and your mind and the hearts hearts and minds of those gathered with us this evening to the gospel proclamation, the proclamation that this service is of the great love of God. As we worship, as the candles are extinguished and the darkness grows, may we reflect on the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the glory of God that is so clearly and powerfully revealed through the cross. Let us stand as you are able for the call to worship. Come, let us gather in the shadow of the cross of Christ. Who would have guessed that the height and depth, the length and width of God's love might look like this? A forsaken Savior on a cross. Let us gather in the darkness of the cross of Christ and commit ourselves to remember the price paid. Let us live our lives in a way that indicates why this Friday is called good. Thanks be to God, who opened the gates of heaven, that we might have the faith, hope, and love, witness in Christ's sacrifice for our salvation.
Let us pray. O God of infinite love and power, we gather together to reflect on the passion of the Christ. We are utterly humbled in the presence of such love and mercy. Open our hearts this day to the goodness of Good Friday and fill us with your love and powerful spirit of holiness. Remove from us all sin and teach us to pray as you prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Psalms. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, A woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at table. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain one and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he sat at table with the 12 disciples. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? He said to him, You have said so.
Jesus, help us follow in your steps. Even when we must go where we do not want to go, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who stands next to me, says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd that the sheep may be scattered. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. As the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Peter declared to him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples.
Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps, that we always remember the words you have spoken, repent of our sins, and cling to you. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Psalms. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. Yea, I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in thee, O Lord, I say, Thou art my God. And he went to a place which was called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and he found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch an hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying, the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners.
Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps. Keep our spirits willing and strengthen us when our flesh is weak. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. A reading from the book of Genesis. They saw him afar off, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and cast him into a pit. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master. And he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled.
Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps that we always confess you as Christ our Lord, Son of Man and Son of God. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, He took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves.
Lord Jesus, we cannot always follow in your steps, for you went to the depths of suffering alone, so that like Barabbas, we would be set free. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the book of Samuel. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, tomorrow about this time, I will send you, I will send to you a man from the land of, of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen the affliction of my people, because their cry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Pilate went out again and said to them, see, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps. Help us bear our crosses, for you bore the heaviest cross for us. 
Help us follow in your steps that we forgive those who have sinned against us because you have freely forgiven us. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole and with his stripes we are healed. A reading from 1 Peter. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no skin, sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he trusted to him whom judges justly. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his clothes and led him out to crucify him.
Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps. Rule in our hearts as our good and gracious King. Help us follow in your steps. For by your innocent suffering and death, you have opened up the way to the Father for us. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him, and Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Lord Jesus, help us follow in your steps. For you have gone where we must all go, to death and the grave. Also, you could rise again. You live and reign now and forever. Father in heaven, today we look on Jesus, your son, stripped and humiliated, scourged and crowned with thorns, mocked and spat upon, betrayed, led out to be nailed to a tree and buried in a tomb. Yet this man takes upon himself our sins, our faults, our failings, and gives us new life in his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen.